So in this video, I'm just going to be experimenting with 3.js. It's a JavaScript library that allows you to do 3D scenes. And I'm just going to use the ability to create a 3D scene to take an image, split it up into different layers, and I'm just going to play around with parallaxing and perspectives to create a scene that kind of looks like you're zooming into the picture like this. And so if any of this interests you at all, stick around. Let's begin. So before we even begin, we need to process this image just a bit. This whole illusion hinges on the fact that the user is not going to be able to tell the difference between the layers of your image. And so this is the pre-processed image right here. Take a look at the, uh, pay attention to the, the street level stuff. So that we have the bus here, we have the cars here, we can see the crosswalk here. This is the processed image. So just to maintain the illusion, whichever image editor you're using, I'm using GIMP, I've smudged the streets, whatever makes sense aesthetically. And most importantly, I feathered the edges of my uh, my layers. So this is layer one, two, three. This is layer one. And all feathering does is it's the modifying the opacity of the edges. If we zoom back out, we'll see that's just a softer edge. If these edges weren't feathered, if they were hardened, the, you'd very easily be able to tell the difference between that. There is one layer here, one layer here. And then another layer here. This would just break the illusion. So for whichever image you're using, however many layers make sense for that image, just make sure you feather the uh, the edges, and they don't have to be the same uh, amount. I think this one was a five pixel uh, feather, so it's a bit harder. This one was, I think, a 150 or 200, so it's a, a lot softer. You can see more of the image bleeds. And then this one was, I think, a 50. So in between. So anyways, just make sure you're you're softening the uh, the edges of your your layers and you're blurring whatever makes sense to blur uh, aesthetically just to maintain that illusion also make sure you're saving these layers in PNGs not JPEGs PNG allows for transparency and that's what we want here so let's move on to the uh, 3.js or 3.js just a, a JavaScript library that allows you to do 3d uh, manipulation using JavaScript so 3.js.org we got a documentation the 3.js file here you can just save as or just click it control a control C Go into your editor, open up a file. I already have it here. Save it and just link it in your HTML right here, three dot js script. All right, so let's start by normalizing the uh, the page. We're just gonna say body, and we'll say margin of zero and a padding of zero. Zero padding of zero. Just do overflow hidden, overflow hidden, and let's just uh, center the canvas that we're gonna work with. So we'll do a position of absolute. Absolute, the top of 50%, top of 50%, left the same, do transform, translate, negative 50%, negative 50%. So let's begin by adding a scene or creating a scene first. We're going to create the scene. We'll do a const scene is equal to new 3.scene. And let's add or load in a texture, which is just the image. We'll do one image first, and then we'll just copy and paste the code for the uh, the other two images. So let's load in texture. Const layer zero is equal to new three dot texture. I think it was texture loader, texture loading. I think it's texture loader dot load. And it was layer zero underscore, no, layer underscore zero dot PNG. All right, so let's bind this texture to a material. So we'll bind texture to material. Const layer zero underscore material. Let's equal to new three, and it was a basic mesh or mesh basic. It was mesh basic material. Yeah, it was either mesh basic or basic. We'll see if this works. Mesh basic material and some options. So the map is the texture, so that's layer zero. We'll do a transparent of true and opacity of just one. So let's uh, create a piece of geometry for this material. So let's create geometry. It's going to be a plane or a flat surface. We'll say const layer zero underscore plane is equal to new three dot plane geometry. And we need to set a width and a height. So we'll just say one by one. So it's one pixel by one pixel. You'll see why we do this in a... Uh, in the later on in the video so create some geometry let's bind the material and the geometry into a mesh so we'll bind the material and the geometry 
into a mesh. So const layer zero underscore mesh is equal to new three dot mesh. And we give it the material first or the geometry first. So layer zero underscore plane and then the actual material layer zero underscore material. Let's set that mesh in 3D space. So layer zero mesh dot position. Position, there we go, dot set. And we'll just do a default of zero, 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 just for this layer. And we need to scale it up. Actually, I'll leave it like that for now so you can see what we're doing. Let's create our, let's add it to the scene now. So add mesh to scene. So scene.add layer zero mesh. There you go. Let's create a camera so we can see all this stuff. So create a camera. We const camera is equal to new three. We're gonna be using a perspective camera. Camera. Four arguments for this. The first is the field of view, 75. The second is the aspect ratio. We'll just do let aspect ratio equal. We'll just do the the width by the height on the uh, the window. So window dot inner width divided by the smaller of the two. So window dot inner height. So that goes here. And then the last two arguments are the it was the near plane and the far plane. Basically how close the camera can move towards the scene or the geometry and how far back. I think the default is 0 0.1 and 1000. We'll just do 10,000 because I think the final camera in the, the actual scene is 1700. So we'll do 0 0.1 and 10,000. Now let's set the camera in 3D space just like we set the mesh in 3D space. So we'll do camera, I think it's camera.position.z. The X and Y can remain at zero. The Z needs to zoom towards us, so it needs to be a positive number. I think the final number was 1700, but I think we'll just do 100 for now. We'll see what that looks like. So the camera is set. Let's create a renderer. So create renderer. Create renderer. There we go. Const renderer is equal to new, three, and it's a WebGL renderer. All right, let's set the size of this guy. So render dot set size. And we're just gonna say the window dot inner width by height. And window dot inner height. Where is it? There we go. And let's call this guy. Renderer dot render. Uh, not yet. We need to actually uh, attach this to the DOM. So we'll do document dot query selector. We'll get the body, we'll append a child, and the render has a property called DOM element, which is just the, the element that we can uh, inject into the, uh, the JavaScript, or excuse me, into the HTML, and that should be DOM element. So let's create an animation loop, and then we'll call the, uh, the renderer. So we'll just say function animate, and in here we're just gonna say request animation frame of the same function, so recursive function, and the renderer dot render the scene and the camera. We'll save, check out our page, and see if we have any errors. No errors. And we have to actually call the function animate. Save, go back. All right, so that's our picture right there. I don't know if you can make it out, we'll zoom just a bit. So this is our one pixel by one pixel uh, texture. We need to expand this to the actual dimensions of the, uh, the image. So right here, when we set it in 3D space, we'll scale it up. So layer zero, mesh dot scale dot set. We'll just do the X and the Y. Let's put in a separate uh, variable. We'll just do let image width, and the width of this image I think was 5,184 pixels by let image height equal. It was 3456. Yeah, 3456. So scale it up by that much. And it's gonna be, we don't really need to put the one, but it's the initial one that we set right here, this one pixel by one pixel, times that width. So times the image width. And since it's just one, I'm just gonna omit it. So it's just gonna be image width and image height. All right, save, we go back. And why aren't we seeing anything? Width, height, uh, we need the, uh, the final guy zero there. 
And there we go. So that's our first image there. The first layer, let's uh, copy and paste some code. We're just going to add the layer two and layer three. So let's do this. Where do we start? Let's start up here. So layer, I'll just fast forward to this part for you guys. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've added those, the other two layers. And this is what the code looks like. I just copy and paste it and just modified the layer zero, one, two, all that stuff. Now to create this parallax effect, we need these layers to be in different depths or Z axes. Currently they're on the same Z axes. So it's a completely flat picture. This is the first layer here. We need the second layer to be about 1000 units away from the first layer. And then the second or last layer here needs to be about uh, 1000 units away from this one. So 2000 units away from the first layer. So you go to the code and we do that right here. When we set them in 3D space, for the Z axes, we need 1,000, negative 1,000, and negative 2,000. I'll save, I'll go back. And now because we've uh, set the images or the layers back, they look smaller. So we need to rescale them back up so it looks to the user, it looks like one flat image. Let me actually do this. Let me see if I can do this to show you guys what I'm talking about. So you can see that we've adjusted the layers in terms of their depth. Let me speed that up so I can go a bit more horizontal times three. There you go. So you can see that the layers are positioned uh, further away from each other. This is gonna, what's going to create the parallax. But so the user just looks like this until we scale it back up. So I think the second layer is scaled back up by 59% in the, the further, the background layer, I think was 117%. So let's go ahead and do that here on the scale set here right here so we want the second layer to be scaled up by 59 percent of the original so it's 59 percent same thing for the height so image height times 0.59 and the width for the or the scale for the last layer was i think 1.17 see what that looks like 1.17 same thing for the height plus image height times 1.17 save we go back and so this to the end user it just looks like one flat image but we know that when we rotate it we can see uh, three distinct images or layers uh, cascading or separated from one another all right so i've gone ahead and i've copied and pasted some code i'll walk you through it uh, programmatically in a second let's just discuss it in terms of direction if you were not a programmer. So let's just say this first. Let's say we have a seed variable right now. There's just a, a timer, some sort of clock that ticks up. This helps us animate the, the page. And then I have an anim ID, which helps me cancel the animation. Once we zoomed in where we want to zoom in, there's no need to keep on running this function. We just want to cancel the function. So let's go back to the image. In terms of direction, what do we want to happen? Well, we want that swoop, right? And so what is a swoop? Well, it's, it's a forward in plus a dropping down. So let's go back into the code and let's add that here. Actually, let's take these two out. And let's do this. Let's take away the canceling of the animation. And so we have the, the one part of the swoop, which is the forward in. Now we want to stop this forward in, uh, in terms of aesthetics, whatever you want. I've already done the, uh, the math on the, uh, not really math, but the calculations on the back end before this video. And so we start a camera at a Z position of 1700, which is this guy right here, which is that guy right here, which is that guy right here. And about when the Z axis reaches uh, 1200, we want to stop this animation. So if we include that line right here, we start at 1700, we stop at 1200. Now, the next part of a swoop is we want to actually move the camera down as well, not just forward, but down. So that's this line right here, this Y. So now when we add the, the forward zoom plus the Y down, we get that swooping effect. There we go. And so in terms of direction, what's off with the scene? Well, if we start at the top, what happens in real life? Let me take these two off. So if we start at the top in real life and we were to swoop in on the scene, maybe around here, what would happen to the background? Well, it would stretch, right? The building would be, get taller because you're closer to it and everything would get a bit wider because you're closer to it. You're more in the scene. So we need to add that as well. Let's go back to the Z and the Y. We swoop in and we need to widen the scene, specifically the second layer, which is why you're seeing all this, uh, this stitching right here, and the third layer. And that's these two lines right here. So we save 
And that's the final scene. We're swooping in and we're kind of managing the perspective, the illusion, by stretching the, the other two layers. So we start there, we end there. Start there, end there. So what are we doing programmatically? Well, we have the anim ID equal to the request animation frame. If the camera position dot Y is less than the 1200 or 1205 in this case, then we completely cut off the animation. We render the scene in the camera and the camera position dot Z. And so we're starting at an initial value of 1700, which is the initial value here, right there. And we're just subtracting 500 in total, but we're subtracting it in a, a different way. If we had this, uh, this line looked like this, we'd get an instant 1700 minus 500, which would be 1200, and you wouldn't see an actual zoom. So all this code does here, this math.absolute value of a sign of seed, it just eases in that, that, uh, that subtraction process, so it's not so instant. The camera position Y, we could say zero minus, but that would be redundant, we don't need that. So it starts at zero, and we're subtracting 300, so we're moving downwards, and again, with this code, we're just moving in a, an easy or an easing in way instead of being so instant. Now, this camera position Y won't achieve a total of 300 uh, units down or subtraction. This whole animation loop hinges on this guy. So whenever this guy finishes, all of this code will finish. So these final values, I don't know what they are. You could go in and code for that, but it doesn't really matter. As soon as this guy hits 1200 or 1205, this whole thing shuts off. So it's the camera position Y. Now these guys look complicated, but let me just reorganize it like this. So this image width plus image width times 0.59, that's exactly the same as this guy right here. So all I'm saying with these two lines is, take the initial scale and then add the C to it. Plus, plus, and initial scale, let's do this the seed and let's do that again for this line so it looks convoluted i could have easily taken it into a, a separate variable like this i could have said let initial uh, scale equal and it would be this guy right here control cut control paste and this would just be for the width control z let's do initial scale so all I'm doing for this is every single frame, we're taking the initial scale or just the initial size of the image and we're adding seed times 15. So on the first frame, it's the initial scale plus the seed times 15, seed is zero, so it's zero. So initial scale, don't modify the, uh, or initial frame, don't modify the scale. This, the second frame would be seed of one times 15, so add 15 and add 45 excuse me, at 30, then 45, and 60. That's all this stuff is doing. It's a bit convoluted. Just understand we're, we're taking the initial scale of the image. We're just scaling it up by 1 times 15. This guy is 1 times 8. This is 1 times 28 and 1 times 20. So we're just stretching it out on the X, stretching it on the Y. And then finally, this camera.lookat just keeps the camera. Let me show you. What if I did this right here? So we're swooping into the scene like that. If I take off that camera look at, we get this effect. We go lower. Camera look at keeps the camera at the zero, zero, zero mark, which is somewhere up here. So it creates that sort of pendulum swing down. So I put it back and the camera stays right here. The focus point of the camera stays here. So that's just the code for animating this, uh, this image, this parallax effect. And that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys want me to post this code anywhere in GitHub or whatever, just uh, request it in the comments. If not, you guys can uh, walk through it in the video. Anyways, leave a like if this helped you at all. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.